Hi guys, I want to give you a sense of how all of the stuff we're going to cover this semester kind of fits together. One of the challenges I've seen with a lot of people in statistics is that there seem to be a bazillion and twelve different statistics and how can I remember them all and which ones do I use blah 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 you know for this or that or the other and they just get overwhelmed and so I think it's because people are looking at the trees you know and I want to give you a sense of the forest so really what I want to do is give you a sense of how all these different pieces we're gonna cover this semester fit together because they actually do fit together quite tightly so here's the big picture okay what you see in the, the uh, uh, blue outline boxes, those are the actual lessons that we're going to cover. And as you can see, they all kind of flow together. All right? But let me walk you through them. First, we, everything starts with probability and measurement, and that's what we cover in the first week. And um, you see some of that in the uh, lecture on the, uh, the, excuse me, the big picture. After that, we're going to turn to descriptive statistics. How do we use numbers to describe data? From then, we have two, I guess, major ways of categorizing statistics. On the left, you see we have linear models. Really what that means is you can use a line, in a sense, to describe the world. Remember, we talk about models. You're going to use a, uh, a line to create a model of the world. On the right-hand side, we're not using lines anymore, but we are looking at uh, categories and what are called non-parametric, which is a big scary word for, you know, how do you analyze uh, ranked data? Um, more, less, uh, some, none, those kinds of things. All right, so let's turn first and look at linear models. Since that's going to be the largest piece of the course, is focusing on different linear models. Now, what's nice about that is all linear models start from the same place. They all share something in common, and the only ways they differ is based on what, uh, what question they're answering. But it's all the same basic method. Once you've got the basis down, it's just tweaking it a little here, tweaking it a little there to ask slightly different questions. So let's look at this. The main thing that differs uh, or differentiates one type of linear model from others is whether you focus on a single measure of individuals, you know, each person in this group uh, is measured one time versus multiple measures. Say each person is measured more than one time. Say for instance if we have an intervention trial where we have a before and after. Okay, So that's the kind of the main division and first we're going to focus on single measures, uh, linear models that deal with uh, having one measure on all the different subjects. So <clears throat> the first question is going to be how are two continuous variables. Think of, say, BMI measure and blood pressure. How are those two things related? How can we tell? Well, for that, we're going to cover uh, or talk about correlation uh, analysis. Then we can go a bit further. Well, okay, so the two continuous variables are related. Can you predict uh, the value of one continuous variable from another? Sure you can. And to find out how to do that, we're going to look at regression. And this is just going to be an introduction to regression. Um, we can actually, I actually teach an entire class on regression. So this is just going to be an intro. What, what can it do for you? Well, <clears throat> sometimes you're not looking at two continuous measures. Sometimes you're actually looking at groups. And so how do you use a linear model to understand the difference between two groups? Well, for that, we're going to cover what are called t-tests. Uh, very simple, very straightforward, and I'll show you how that works. But sometimes we have more than two groups. We have three or four, four or however many groups. What can we, how can we use a linear model to understand that many groups? Well, for that we're going to use an analysis of variance, or what's called an ANOVA. Now, but sometimes you have um, more than just you know the groups but the groups may be different on a continuous variable think of if I'm comparing uh, the um, weight outcomes of say a group that I'm treating for weight loss and a group I'm not but it turns out guess what they're different in the weights that they start with so there's a confounding variable and we'll talk more about what confounding variables are but what do I do when there's my groups have a confounding variable and it's a continuous variable well, for that, we can use what's called an ANCOVA, or Analysis of Covariance, which is just a variation on an ANOVA. Well, 
<coughs> what do we do when our groups are different on a confounding categorical variable? Um, and a categorical variables are just uh, Let's say um, variables say men and women are different. One group has mostly men, the other has mostly women. Hey, that might mess up our analysis. What do we do then? Well, for that, we have a factorial ANOVA. Again, it's kind of a scary word maybe, but it's actually very simple, and it's just a variation on an ANOVA. So we're taking all the things we've already learned, tweaking it a bit. Now, sometimes, we have multiple measures on the same individuals. Remember, I uh, let's say for a diabetes treatment program, um, I have the measures on my, my subjects at the beginning of the program and then at the end, did they get better? Or let's say I'm looking at changes uh, in response to a drug trial. All right. Well, I have measures before um, and then I give people the, the new drug and then I measure them after. Again, I've got multiple measures on the individuals. Well. <clears throat> what do we do when we have multiple measures on the same individuals? Well, in this case, we're going to do a repeated measures analysis. And we can do this repeated measures e when we have, um, say, just individuals at one time and another. We can also do repeated measures when we have groups measured at different times. But sometimes we've got multiple measures on individuals who are in different groups. Well, what do we do then? Well, for this, we've got what's called a within and between analysis, or what Field calls a mixed analysis. Um, and so that's just a variation on the repeated measures, but it also looks at the, uh, or uses the methods that we used with the ANOVA. So it's just a variation on the same thing we've already cut, well, already have covered. Now, we talked about linear models. What about the categorical and the non-parametric methods? Again, these are actually pretty simple. And it's, we start out by asking, how do you know if there's an association between two categorical variables? Say, your political affiliation, uh, Democrat, Independent, Republican, and men and women. Are they different? Well, those are two categorical variables. What would we use? Well, for this, we're going to you look at, um, I spend a week doing categorical analyses. And again, pretty straightforward stuff. Well, sometimes we need to analyze ranked or ordinal variables. And these are variables where um, I have, uh, say, um, you know, uh, I, was, I could ask a question of how much do you like this particular product? Well, I don't like it at all. Well, I like it some. Well, it's okay. Well, I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. So those are ordinal variables. And we can, sometimes we have variables where uh, we need to um, analyze them that way. And we use non-parametric statistics to do that. But I'll tell you what's really awesome about non-parametric statistics. They're just basically ranking. How do, uh, when we have problems where sometimes um, our data don't meet necessary statistical assumptions to, be, to carry out um, all of our linear model tests. Well, what do we do? Do we just throw in the towel and say, hey, go home, you know, there's nothing we can do? No. What we do is you can actually use non-parametric statistics to solve uh, some of the problems for, say, correlation, t-tests, ANOVAs, repeated measures. Um, when your linear models don't work out, you can use non-parametric statistics. So you see how it sounds like we're covering a lot of different stuff, but actually we're just covering topics in a few major themes, and they all fit together, and you'll see how that all works as we move through the class.